What's up? You want me to add this? Okay, this year, buddy. Yeah, go ahead. Mute me on your end. Okay, is it better? Yeah, go ahead. Wait, how do you make this louder? It's okay. It's loud enough, dude. Get to the point, Junior. I'm already upset. I'm going to punish Osama for your sin. Okay. So, well, I just wanted you to explain one verse, and it's John 20, 23. You Why? may have, but I just don't remember how you explain Why? it. Why do you want me to do that? Because it's uh, it seems a bit weird because it says, if you forgive the sins I'm of sorry. any, they are forgiven. You called the statement of Jesus weird, and you don't want to get blocked for that. Hmm. Wait, no, no. It seems a bit weird. Jesus' words seems a bit weird. Hmm. Block him! No, Block I... him now! Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Open up John 20. Open up the J Gospel of John chapter 20. Yeah, it's already open. Oh, they, sorry. I didn't know. I can't see through the screen. I apologize, sir. Do you forgive me for existing? <laughs> yeah. Read 20, John 20, read 21 and 22. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me also, as the Father sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, now read 21 and 22 one more time. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So you see the context of that particular verse is about the, the mission, right? Sending them out to do what? What is he sending them out to do? Uh, preach, evangelize. You're like scared, dude. Speak with confidence. What is he going to send them out to do? To go to a buffet? No, evangelize. Okay. So as I, the Father sent me, I send you. Meaning what did the Father send Jesus to do? To preach the gospel of salvation, the good news that Jesus Christ has come to save the world, and you need to turn to him to be to be saved, right? Yeah. Okay, so now what he's saying is, now I will send you to do the same thing. And just like Jesus worked in union with the Holy Spirit, in perfect, inseparable union with the Holy Spirit, to accomplish the Father's will on earth, because Jesus and the Spirit never work apart from one another, he's now saying that same Spirit, that was working with me and in me and through me will now be working in you and through you and empowering you to continue this ministry of preaching the gospel, right? That's why he then breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. He now makes them spiritually alive and he will empower them by the Spirit to now preach the same gospel and do miracles that Jesus did to continue the ministry of bringing people to saving faith. It's in that context, he says 23. Now read 23. If you forgive the sins of any other, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So in the context, the forgiveness of sin or the condemnation of sin is directly tied in with their ministry being sent out. Being sent out to preach the gospel, right? Yeah. Now, how do they forgive someone's sins? How do they <clears throat> condemn someone for their sins? By proclaiming, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come to save you. Believe in him, you're forgiven. You don't believe in him, you, you're condemned, you remain in your sin, and you go to hell. Now, how do I know that's the meaning in the context of this chapter? Just now read John 20, 30 to 31. Watch John, who was one of them. Notice how he forgives and how he condemns. John 20, 30 to 31. Okay. And truly, Jesus did many other... Wait, what? John 20, 30 to 31? Dude, I'm about to block you. Why are you shocked? Read it again before I bust Osama's head. <laughs> and truly, and Jesus you even have a funny did... picture of me, too. Is his picture on you? Look, look what... Hey, look, he uses my picture for his... For his... Look, look. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> That's you cool. would like it, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, look like that. Yeah. Here, let me show everybody. And he's telling me, I'm not going to watch, watch, watch you. Look, I'm going to show people what you're doing to me. So. Oh, you're laughing, huh? You okay, watch here. It is, it's cool, man. <laughs> okay, watch, watch. Guys, watch what his picture is. His picture on his Skype is my, me looking weird. Look, look. That's me. That's what he's got. 
That's terrible. See? But I like them. You can even see my nostrils, Junior. <laughs> All right. Now, read John 20, 30 and 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in him. Do you see what John did? He just proclaimed, you're forgiven if you believe in Jesus Christ and you receive eternal life. How did he forgive him? Yeah. How did he forgive them? By telling them, believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you will receive eternal life. Now go to John 3. 36. John 3, 36. Okay. I like that. Okay. I like how you say okay, like you're offended and have an attitude. Okay. No, that's that's not what I mean. That's okay. John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides on him there you go john said you're forgiven john said you're condemned to hell how i'm preaching the gospel and i'm letting you know when you believe you're forgiven you are saved you're washed you have everlasting life you reject you're condemned you remain in your sin you go to hell you caught it yeah now go to first john the epistle of john first john chapter five Okay, first John chapter five. When you get there, let me know. Wait, what verse? Okay, if you're in the epistle of John, not the gospel, go to chapter five. I want you to read now from verses nine to thirteen. Okay. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his of his son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. So notice, if you, slowly, if you believe the witness of God concerning his son, Jesus Christ, then you have God's witness in yourself. That means you're bearing witness to it. You're in agreement with God. If you disagree with God and what he said about Jesus, you make God out to be a liar. Keep reading. Because he has not believed the testimony that God gave, that, that God has given of his son. Mm -hmm. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you caught it? You see how it's he's pronouncing forgiveness and condemnation? You believe in Jesus Christ as God's Son. You will live. You have life. You're forgiven. You don't believe in the Son of God. You don't have him. You have no life. You will die and perish. Keep reading it all the way to 13 because I got a few more. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So you caught it, right? Yep. Now go to First John, same letter, same epistle, chapter 1, read verses 7 to 10. This is what it means in the context. All right. But if we walk... But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Mm. Did you catch it? If you believe in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ will wash you of your sin. If you confess your sin, he is faithful to forgive you. If you say you have no sin, then you remain in your sin. You stand condemned because you make him out to be a liar. You see how John is forgiving and condemning? How is he doing it? Yeah. How is yeah. John forgiving and condemning people? Well, like he's preaching mm -hmm. and he's saying that if you walk in the light, then we have the light and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us and wash us from all sin. So that, that's but how it is, right? Don't... So you get it then. In other words, they're, they're saying, you believe in Jesus, you are forgiven. So you believe in Christ, you're forgiven. Have no doubt. You don't believe in Jesus, you remain condemned. God's wrath is on you. That's how they're forgiving and condemning in that context. Because in the context, it's about 
Jesus sending them out in the life and the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel. And they have the authority to say, now that you believe in Jesus, you're forgiven. You have everlasting life if you remain in union with him and yield to the spirit. You reject Jesus, now you perish. You are now condemned and God's wrath remains on you. Sadly, Sam, if 